I'm play devil's advocate again. All right. Critics say, yeah, but you're being pimped. You're being pimped by the record, record executives who will allow you to do your thug life because it betrays a certain black. I mean, you've heard it, yeah. that if you were just a singer, you wouldn't have the same record contracts you had. Right. But because you portray the thug life, the gangster rap, they've allowed you to make that money. They've allowed you to push and make you platinum. I beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting pimped. That's true. But um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody would be pimped. You know, it's like, it's not that you get pimped. It's how long you get pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because if you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at the white kids and Raiders had some, it's the white folks getting pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm writing in my raps is what the white kids is going to be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know what I'm saying? As far as my teacher told me when I was in high school, I ain't gonna be You know what I'm saying? I just gotta, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. That's not the, that's not the crime. The crime is how long you allow yourself to get pimped. You have to come up. Everything is a come up. Everything is a struggle. You start from the bottom, working to the top. Like, real talk, y'all. <laughs> Real talk, y'all. Like, I really wish Tupac was here to see the fruits of his labor. The fruits, even though he only, like, I think he only had, what, two or three albums that came out. He was still young, beginning of his stage. I think he was 24, 25 when he passed. Like, he, his words sing to us today. Like, his being who he is and what he stands for, it all lives in there. Like, Pimp Tupac, let's, let's, let's get into this. If you believe that, let's 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 argue about it in the comments. I'll see y'all. What up, you guys? It's Wolf Sage. Welcome to Daydream, where daydream they drip, when they drip they create. It's all a process, you guys. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got I got cats, y'all. So you know, you want to see them? Look at this mother. Look at him. Look at him. Ain't he cute? Ain't he cute? But he gets into everything. So if you hear stuff. This is him. But what up, you guys? Uh, we, I'm talking about Tupac, you know, R.I.P. Tupac, the legend, the GOAT, you know, him and Biggie will forever. I, I just wish they could be able to be here to see how they have impacted music and how they have flourished. And even though I believe that maybe the rap scene may be different because they still be around, you know, I don't think a lot of stuff would be done. A lot of styles would be happening until later on. It wouldn't be happening now, probably be happening like, you know, in 2030s stuff, you know. Um, you know, the whole SoundCloud area and like the evolution, I think they could have kept it going. But, you know, you never know. You never know. All we can say is we wish that they were here. But, you know, is Tupac being pimped? Was he being pimped? That's different questions. And I think he um, explained it very well. He did. He explained it so well. And um, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> When you're first getting into this music industry and everything, you know, and I'm not a musician, but I've, you know, I've been a fan of hip hop and I've always watched it from the beginning to where it is right now. I've seen so many documentaries, there's so much music. Honestly, I'm not even going to get into a hip hop conversation with anyone because I'm just going into, into places that I still need to <laughs> go through. But to be Tupac, he, at that time, it was, yeah, he had to be under someone. He had to be signed to Death Row and be signed to Interscope and get this platform to be able to put his stuff out there. You see, they both just be just doing stuff. But he had to really, he had to really work for it. He had to um, put himself into a machine where they could be able to put his face out there and they could be able to put his music out here. And he is completely right. He is the one who's pimping these white kids for real, for real. Ain't that right, Turtle? <laughs> they, they, he pimping out. The, um, the white kids because they're the ones and even shows now they're the ones who are consuming the music other than us other than you know us people of color and black people they are the most that are going that are consuming and also having it influence them 
So when we like to think about uh, my rap right now and how, you know, every kid, you know, there's always some Addison person on TikTok that's always influenced by um, hip hop and taking our stuff. There's always, you know, the vote culture vultures, these kids that grew up that are in the music industry now grew up on our culture but never had any impact or any like relations to it other than the white people and the white parents that were consuming the music so he's completely right he is the one who's pimping them out in the end because you have to have that mind state as an artist you have to be able to know what you're worth and what the impact of your art is going to be am i going to be an artist that's just going to um be just making art and then it's just you know whatever i want to do i want to do and i'm just not really have a message with it or you can have a message but not really an overview but you could be an artist like tupac where everything that you put out every word that you say it means something it means something to you it means something to someone else and it can uh, it it also helps us understand and help him understand how the world is because he was able to express himself in so many ways but there's a lot of key things that i want to uh, touch up in in this video in this little clip because kids are different today <clears throat> him talking about how him talking about how kids are influenced by hip-hop and how anything he says on the track uh in a couple months he puts it out and every kid is going to be saying this to their parents <laughs> the n-word is a big thing white kids are out here uh, especially like they, they ain't saying it they ain't out like on the internet saying it unless they really raunchy but there are kids out in their neighborhoods with their friends saying nigga 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 this and that all that they're saying all those words and <laughs> I, I I could be mad but like if your influence if I was influenced on current on country music on Elvis and all that stuff I'd probably be dressing and singing like Elvis too so I can like I can be able to be like yeah don't don't say the n word don't say that but honestly guys you guys were influenced and because look now we we as artists not even musicians but artists in general have a platform where we can be able to ha um, create music create art create whatever we need to books comics whatever and be able to have a following and have someone that's going to be a super fan that's going to hold on to every word we say that's going to you know be influencing for us to start trying to do good push them into a better into a better way of living or a better sight an insight or a mind sight you know you can't save everyone but shit ask me how many people tupac saved you can't can you because it's too many to count so <laughs> like um yeah, a big thing about Tupac, and that really came up to me uh, watching this video, is that he was right. A lot of people are influenced by, you know, the thug persona. You know, we see it. There's Young Thug. There's, you know, all these other different, like, thug rappers and gangster rappers that are out now that, like, like kids, they are literally shooting up the place. They're, like, don't... Um, having blicks on they saying all the chicago lingo all the new york drill lingo all the even overseas where the new new york drill scene came from with um with the uk the uk drill scene like they're, they're kids talking like them now like it's crazy y'all it's crazy because that just shows how much of an influence we have tupac saw that he saw how much of an influence we have and it's up to us to be able to push that forward and to keep that going to keep that engine moving so that we can, like, if you're, like he said, you're, everyone's going to be pimped out, but what are you going to do about it? Are you going to continue to get pimped? Are you going to continue to get uh, molested? Are you continue to get, you know, fucked around and everything? Or are you going to fight back in the smartest way you can? Because I'm not, I know everyone is not physically fighting, and no, I'm no saying that, but you have to think smart. It's not about working hard, it's about thinking hard. You work hard first, and you get to a point where you then have to think hard because the work was already put in to where now you just got to think that's why that's why i'm trying to find so many different that's why i'm trying to do these different streams of income you all it's just i'm opening my mind to so many things i was doing this years ago but now that i've been able to see some examples like from dorian with group 82 and a whole bunch of other people it's like it's becoming more clear to me so but the biggest message 
The biggest message that Tupac is trying to give us, you guys, is that you got to put in the work. Especially if you're working for yourself, everyone is going to be pimped out this and this and this and that and that way. You know, me as a graphic designer, I make logos, I make graphics, I make banners, I make, you know, stickers, t-shirts, designs and all that stuff. There are a lot of people that have, you know, effed me over. There's a lot of people that pimp me. Like, they were like, hey, I'm going to do this for you. And then they never get to it or do that for you. And they never get back. And, you know, and I'm getting and I'm trying to get better with that, too. You know, being more professional, trying to get um, stuff together. But I know that it all comes with the territory. I know that as, as I get better and as I learn, I'm also going to save myself from those pains of getting um, <laughs> pimped, <laughs> pimped out, you know. In the art game, you get pimped out too. I don't want to be like, and that's not to say anything about Basquiat, love Basquiat, but I wish his family could really be able to, you know, monetize off of his artwork. You know, if he did have family that, you know, did care for him and did love him, I want, I, I really hope that they're able to, someone like, someone like that, not every artist could be able to have that where you could be able to, you know, have your estate in order and have things where, you know, your art can continuously live and work for you guys. So Tupac was right and his music lives on today. We still listening to it right now. I'm still, that's why you watching the video cause you saw it was Tupac and you saw it was Suge Knight next to him and you guys like a little bit of drama. I get it. I'm, I'm a, I'm a cancer too. I'm petty too. <laughs> um, yeah, but the industry, that's just what the industry is. You know, nothing really much more to say with this, but you know, you guys, it's, are you either going to get pimped or are you going to pimp someone? So when it comes to this music industry stuff, you know, Tupac and all of them, they had to take those bullets and those arrows for us just so we don't have to deal with us. If you don't believe me, look it up. Look look up all the independent artists that are out there. There's Dorian. You know, I tell you guys, I want to give you guys, I want to offer you guys something so you guys feel like, you know, I have something to offer you. I just don't want to be making videos and not offering anything. But, you know, if you don't believe me, look up Dorian Group 82. He's going up there he's about to be making millions of dollars <laughs> this year and i hope to be able to follow in that path in the next couple of years doing what i'm trying to do so you know you know i appreciate you guys for liking if you guys you know really like this topic and you like what i was talking about please uh like subscribe comment you know just tell me what you guys think let's talk about it and it's wolf sage thank you guys for liking this video welcome to daydream is daydream where daydream they drip and when they drip they create it's all a process you guys <laughs> peace out